So the Democrat National Committee may know it better just at the DNC. They're planning to now this is not a throwback episode to the COVID years, just to make sure that you know this is uh, 2024. Uh, to virtually nominate President Biden, which you might think, is it because of his age? Is it because they don't want to actually have a convention? They're still planning on having their convention in Chicago, but they messed up in Ohio by not getting on the ballot correctly. And you would think, again, these are all, you know, longtime party activists, a former vice president, that his team would be able to figure out how to get on the ballot. But they didn't. And then Ohio State Legislature, they deadlocked on a fix last week to get President Biden on the ballot in November. So instead, uh, the DNC has announced that their work around this will actually be to hold a virtual roll call to ensure that Biden gets on the ballot in all 50 states. Now, what does this mean? It means that when you actually go to the convention in Chicago in August, a month after the Republican convention in Milwaukee, it's, it's kind of like those, it is kind of like those COVID conventions that we saw, Logan, because the the people when they do if they do a nominating kind of show they've already that's already yeah, that's, 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 that's all it is it's just for show to give them their airtime uh, and they said you know through a virtual roll call uh, we will ensure the Republicans can't chip away at our democracy through incompetence or partisan tricks and that Ohioans can exercise their right to vote for the presidential candidate of their choice like it's your fault that it was scheduled wrong yeah I mean you messed up the schedule and right you put the 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 Convention after the time or before the time that you actually had the nomination. Right. And so, uh, again, I don't really, like, people should get on the ballot. People should yeah. be able to vote. But I think there's something else at play here that they're doing. I think that they think by utilizing this method and making it a show convention, when you have DNC conventions in Chicago in the past, they've turned pretty wild. I mean, and, and, and that was the civil rights era. We've also had some pretty wild protesting. Uh, right in this era, we're going to talk about it in the next segment with Rick Rennell yeah, for sure. about some new endorsements of the anti-Israel oh, yeah. uh, protesters. Mm-hmm. And so, Top-notch A-listers. And by the way, I mean, Chicago would be a pretty easy city to find a lot of those protesters, a lot of those types. So by doing this virtually, does it give them actually more control or does it open it up to chaos? I think there's like one way or the other. But I could see if this was Donald Trump, they'd be mocking this on MSNBC. Now, stop. Oh, yeah. Let me remind you, he had to fight to keep his name on the ballot. We had to go to court just to make sure you could vote for him in the primary. Yeah. And not because of a clerical error, because no, of, no, of just no, because political prosecution. Secretaries of state were removing him. Yeah. And yeah. judges, state Supreme Courts, like in Colorado, and uh, ultimately uh, was vindicated there. But understand that Donald Trump had to fight. Joe Biden is just going to, oh, we'll do it virtually. Yeah, I mean, we have said, and I think Rick Rennell is going to be joining us next, so I've said, you should be able to get him on the ballot. He should be on the ballot because sure. we don't play those kind of games. That's, yeah. uh, b- but you know for sure if this was the, the she was on the other foot, they'd be 100% playing these games. They would be begging for the convention to you know go awry. But again, that's their own scheduling problem. But of course, that was the uh, DNC chairperson. Uh, Harrison, of course, couldn't just leave it at that. Couldn't say we've made the adjustment. We're going to him. Got to go low. Got to say the partisan incompetence and the partisan tricks that so Ohioans can exercise and make sure Republicans can't chip away at our democracy. He's like, you screwed up. I mean, that's the end of the day. I don't think there's going to be any issue with it being on the ballot. And you know what? I don't think that's our, our fight. It does show that they're not able to follow like the basic rules. And that just kind of shows you, I think, when you see that the – this isn't the Obama, all the Obama team. This is kind of the Obama juniors are running the the Biden show. Yeah, uh, the Obama Maybe team was at a different hardcore. level, yeah. and they also were used to the COVID years where you got away with basically making up rules as you went. I mean, you you made up electoral rules. We all said that. I mean, nothing. We can't allow that to happen again. So I get the concern that Tim has. But I still would rather beat people fair and square, let them be on the ballot, and I'll beat you in Ohio. So they're going to do a virtual Virtual nomination, which means what you see on the floor that night before he speaks that, you know, they nominate. It's just a show. That'll be just for show. And now listen. It's already 99% for show. Yes. I mean, I will say that on the Republican side, you always, this, this was with Trump too, there were... There, there were it, real the, protest moves. Yeah, there were people trying to make sure or try to get people to not do it. Yes. There was all the, there was even pop, you know, celebrities putting out videos saying, you don't have to do this. Right. 
you know, or, uh, you know, even Ted Cruz at the time, vote your conscience. There was people talking about, I mean, that, that may have been to the American people. I can't remember. Kid Cuccinelli uh, initially uh, was on the floor of the Republican yeah. convention and for Virginia. I'm mean, trying. So there were, there, there could be some drama. It was very short lived. And honestly, most people don't pay attention to that. They pay attention to the major speech mm -hmm. by the candidate. But what I think we're going to is that it's that time period where, yes, they've said that yes to these debates. I think that's more interesting to people probably than these conventions anyways, uh, because that was going to be all we were really going to get before was like the convention speeches and then like political rallies. Yeah. I mean, now that we have some debates scheduled, now both of us said, do they actually happen? We were under a month we'll now. So you'd assume production's got to start happening right now. If they're going to do, well, now we know famously President Trump doesn't really prep uh, <sighs> hardcore for these debates. He feels like, I mean, I mean at least historically. Historically, I mean, he's talked about that. He's not sitting there and doing tons of mock debates. He knows kind of what he says, and he goes in there and does it. Uh, traditionally, you would have a lot of that prep going into such a major event. And look, the, the networks want it to happen. This will be one of their highest rated, I mean, CNN's highest rated show probably in a couple of years, if It'll not be, ever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just real. It will, it, will, it will pop a huge number. So they want it to happen. I hope it happens. Uh, again, I watched a, a RFK interview last night because he's saying now they're throwing more requirements at him to try to get uh, on the debate stage. He was on um, Cuomo last night discussing it, and really they're clearly trying. Both honestly, both Trump and Biden don't want him clearly to be in that debate, uh, and they are figuring out ways for him not to be. And I think he probably won't be. I think that will will likely be the the scenario. But uh, it, it's, it makes it creative. It makes it interesting. I'm, I'm I'm curious how it's presented. You know, they said no audience. That's one of the things I think people are a little bummed out about. So you won't have that sort of raucous, you know, live event feel. It will have almost a vice presidential debate feel. I wonder if they'll be seated. I wonder how that'll be handled. These are two guys that love just throwing out phrases. Yeah. And some wild stuff. And wild stuff. Yeah. And, and, and Joe Biden will make claims that are, you kind of have to be on your toes because the, the, you're, and be thinking right when he's saying it because he'll say things that he did and it doesn't even add up to how old he is. Yeah, he's marched with people. He was—he's not even old enough to march with. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He makes Things up like a lot that. of stories. You know, so you got to kind of—if you're debating him, you don't want to let him get away with too much of that kind of—and uh, I think that what President do they Trump, allow them in like commercial breaks to be like, hey, like, do you have like a ring, like a like a coach on the side? Like, do you have a uh, a guy in the corner? Not usually, not usually. Usually, it's just they're standing there. Yeah, I was just curious about that. Like when they go to breaks, since they're not like a corner man who that's comes all, up and be like, no, hit him with that's this. All, there could be people that do makeup. From like the the yeah network. sometimes you see people go on stage yeah uh, but, but they're not debate they're not like a, a someone involved in the campaign all of that would be decided yeah. so so you you could actually negotiate that out maybe they did this time that'd be kind of cool to be like you could live call them out on it you do have that going on on like social media now yeah but you, I mean, you always like have you live um, uh, you, you know the the war rooms are going live yeah the Pinocchios are going right. 